We have another talk coming um, that'll get you pretty fired up and we'll provide an opportunity to get informed and be involved. So David Gelber was three decades at CBS News. He's an award-winning producer. He was Ed Bradley's producer on 60 Minutes for over 20 years, an incredible storyteller, an incredible investigative journalist. And he turned to climate change about 10 years ago. He's uh, the founder, co-founder and chairman of the Years Project. You may remember the Years of Living Dangerously, which won the Primetime Emmy for Best Primetime Show, telling stories about climate change, the impacts, the solutions. It was on Showtime in season one. It was on Nat Geo in season two. And the Years Project since then has been telling stories in smaller bite size. We've all gotten more impatient. We're all using a lot more social platforms, our phones. And so by turning um, his investigative skills his production direction skills to climate change. I'm so grateful that David is part of our climate change um, crew out here working on these issues. Please join me in welcoming to the stage David Gelber. Boy, that stuff about wildfires and, and clear cuts, clear cutting was really interesting. Um, <clears throat> well, thanks for being here, everybody. Um, there have been a number of um, optimistic speeches this week, but that's not why I'm here. Uh, I, I'm here to be the guy who will name and shame. Uh, it may seem like I'm, uh, I'm trying to win the Debbie Downer Award for the conference, but, but hang with me and I'll explain why naming and shaming um, could be a huge breakthrough for the climate movement. For several decades, and Amy said some most of this, I'll try and cut this short, um, my partner and I, um, for decades, my partner and I lived at 60 Minutes. I say lived because it was such a huge part of our life. <clears throat> we produced dozens of stories hoping that people would learn something new and important. But there was always one story at the forefront of our mind, and that story was climate change. Um, it was and still is the single biggest story of our lifetime. That's why we left 60 Minutes more than a decade ago to focus exclusively on climate. We did a, a series that Amy referred to, uh, Years of Living Dangerously which became the biggest climate change television show in history. Um, our company, The Years Project, is now the premier producer of climate content on the web and beyond. I'm telling you this because when I tell you this next part, I want you to believe me. The age of oil is not over. The age of fossil fuels is still here, and the industry is fighting like hell to keep it alive, and they're doing a pretty good job. Not only that, but the most popular brands, the ones that line your shelves at home, are working hand in hand to do as little as possible to fight climate change. I told you this wouldn't be an optimistic speech, but this is definitely not about the inevitability of doom. It's about a powerful way to fight back against the fossil fuel industry and its allies. I say allies because it's not just the Exxons and the Shells of the world that are ruining the planet. It's, it's all the private sector companies that refuse to act on climate. The way we fight back is to open people's eyes to the danger the private sector poses to our climate. So we've joined with three superb uh, NGOs, activist groups, GSCC, the Sunrise Project, and the Partnership Project. These folks have launched campaigns to pressure large international brands to take bolder steps toward climate progress and to stop doing some of the stupid stuff that makes things worse. They're using sophisticated digital tools and they're making measurable progress, but each of these groups tells us they're desperate for video content to support their campaigns. Here's an example of a low budget video that we did for GSCC, which is targeting Canon for secretly funding climate denial. Video please.
<laughs> so after we put out this video, Canon uh, uh, GSCC ran a series of, of tests on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter to assess the impact. James Lorenz, who ran the GSCC campaign, told us it wasn't even close. This video performed better across the board. It massively outperformed all other content we tried in gaining engagement and clicks. Now, that, that's just one campaign. Our partners have several dozen more campaigns they've already launched or, they're, or ones that they're about to launch. And each one needs videos. Our goal is to produce one video a week for each of these campaigns. The great thing about running, the, the great thing about running videos on social media is that you can target specific audiences. Through paid ads, you can reach shareholders, executives, employees, and of course, customers. Customers at any company you like. You can deliver these messages directly to whoever you like. We'll be targeting, uh, the, some of the companies will be targeting Shell, Toyota, Citibank, HSBC, Adani Enterprises, the coal giant in India, and many others. But we have another weapon. Um, over the past few years, we've built the, an influencer network on climate. We have nearly 100 influencers in this network. Oprah Winfrey, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Mark Ruffalo, many others. And it has a reach of nearly 300 million people. Uh, and uh, so we'll be activating that network too so that these campaigns can reach all of those people for free. One of our influencers, Mark Ruffalo, tells us it's the first time a movement group has successfully put this kind of thing together. So that's the hopeful part of my speech. When it's done right, video works, high quality, video that is targeted and measurable, produces results that create real change. We've learned that people are hungry for action. People care about climate change, but they don't always know what to do. These videos show viewers who they should be fighting, and they reveal what private corporations are doing to our planet for short-term profit. In fact, videos work so well that the fossil fuel companies themselves are using it relentlessly. They're running hundreds of ads on social media right now, telling people how great they are, how they're the ones who are reducing emissions, how they care about the planet, how they're the good guys. If you think that sounds crazy, here's just one ad from the American Petroleum Institute. It says, I'm quoting, America's natural gas and oil companies are leading the way to lower emissions here and abroad. And here's another one from API. We've reduced CO2 emissions to the lowest in a generation, and now we're working to reduce methane too. Those, uh, those ads ran on the same uh, day that the New York Times, this was about a week ago, uh, that the New York Times reported that emissions are at their highest levels ever. And if you go to the Facebook's ad library, you'll, you'll be shocked at how many of these bogus ads the fossil fuel companies run. We were horrified. It's a veritable tsunami of lies and misinformation. These brands are doing everything they can to drag their feet on climate, and you know they're pretty much getting away with it. But we're using video to drag them into the future we want and deserve. A future with clean, renewable energy that reinvigorates the economy, creates jobs, and makes our world a safer, more livable planet. GSCC, the Sunrise Project, and the Partnership Project and others are doing indispensable work to figure out how they can be most effective on climate. They have funding uh, to create smart, sophisticated campaigns targeting the private sector, which is especially important right now when things are pretty much at a deadlock at the, uh, at the government level in Washington and capitals all over the world. There is action in the private sector happening, however. Um, what these NGOs don't have and are desperate to have our videos supporting their work. We're committed to producing those videos um, because we can't imagine anything more likely to pressure the biggest corporations on the planet to do the right thing for all of us. And my partners have reminded me to say that we need more funding to make those videos happen. Thanks. <laughs>